Welcome back to Life and Hair. I posted my Renee of Paris wig review not too long ago and I do plan to complete um, an update for that because I think that really my first impression was very much based on the dealing with lots of different elements that were new to me. The kitten. It's the kitten! She can't leave anything alone. <laughs> Seven months old and I'm still having to basically bring up a toddler. It was very much a first impressions wig and it was really for people who found that they had just ordered a very different style to what they were used to and um, I was trying to convey all the contradictory um, emotions and opinions that one might experience going from always having long hair or bobbed hair or curly hair um, to having something that really was starting to be described as a short wig and I describe it as a short wig it is short at the back all of this has got to be put up really really well um, so that it doesn't start to have straggly bits coming out of the bottom of it which is a dead giveaway if you're wearing a wig uh, but I, I actually really like it now not too long ago I knitted a jumper it is um, my newfound passion for winter whites it's actually like a bat wing kind of affair very soft made out of alpaca and believe me when I put that ray wig on with the marshmallow colored ends and maybe some diamante earrings and a very glossy sparkly lip gloss it looks utterly divine so I plan to do an update on that wig to get a little bit of hairspray in it get it to how I want it to be and ladies this is something that you must appreciate is that when you get that wig out of the box it's just a generic piece of hair it could belong to anybody and it's the process of becoming comfortable with it and getting it to belong to you that's what we'd like so I have received another wig in the post it's another Paula Young it's Ashley and it's in the color now can I remember the color well of course it's got a whole load of numbers but it's rooted it's a rooted red which I'm going to have to put on the screen because I cannot remember so this is my first impression with this wig. Getting everything off. Isn't this the loveliest... The cats, I'm so sorry. Isn't this the loveliest thing? You know, when you get a new colour. I mean, when I was in my very early 20s, I think around 23, I dyed my hair red. Actually, I went to Harrods and had it dyed there. And I said to them, I want a Susan Sarandon red. And they dyed my hair the same colour as Susan Sarandon's. But that was the last time I was a redhead. And these, these reds, the stranded reds with the darker root. And bear in mind, this root is really quite dark. It's a fascinating colour and I can't wait to get it on. I haven't tried it on at all. Let me take these tags off. I'm very excited because I'm one of these people that loves to match my hair to my clothing. I kind of put on this red dress because I thought it would, it would go with this colouring best. Well, let's get that zigzag out of the front. 
and start to make this wig come to life somewhat. Do you know, I really love the Ashley wig. I've actually got it in another colour. I think the colour is Rooted Honey. And I love the texture of the fibre here. I can see straight away that the root is very dark, much darker than what I've been used to. There's a bit of permatease there at the top, so let's wake this girl up a little. And also, as usual with these fringed styles, the fringe is extremely long. So I am going to actually trim it. You know, with trimming, you have to sort of locate the actual fringe, so there's some top hair here that you need to get out of the way to isolate the fringe. The actual fringe rather than the side fringe. It's not a precise science because, let's face it, I'm not a hairdresser. I'm nowhere near trained as a hairdresser. But even, yeah, so it's kind of feathered. It's kind of feathered, so I'm just going to go for it. That's the best thing to do sometimes, is to just go for it. I'm cutting in at an angle and you know because I've, I've already had this wig before I know that you have to take quite a lot off uh, but doing it in stages is probably the best idea. I'm probably taking off about half a centimetre, coming up to, at a time. Let's see. Mm, I think maybe a little bit more, actually. It makes all the difference to looking like an English sheepdog, um, or actually looking like a human being. I hate to say this, but <laughs> I'm going to take off a bit more. Then what do you think? That's better. God help you if you get a little bit of the, these uh, fibres in your eyes. That could be a big problem. Okay, so I already know from previous dealings with this particular wig that this is a heat resistant fibre. So it can be styled, you can straighten it, you can put curls in it. It comes with a beautiful, really nice kind of movement. It's, it's, it's shorter on the top than it is sort of as you go down. And that creates a nice movement here and gives you some fullness in the style. Um, the other thing that I've noticed about this wig, which I'm very... Um, intrigued by and fascinated as to how they achieve it but the, 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 the curve of the hair at the back doesn't flip out and it doesn't fall straight it's a really nice one it kind of continues to curve 
and hold its shape and give this style body. I, I like to uh, rough this style up a little, but actually in my experience it doesn't keep its, um, its height very well because actually it doesn't have that much permatease, although I can feel some. Um, so I don't expect it to keep, to keep its bushy style very much. I, I really like this. I think I would love wearing this with black or um, a, a, some kind of a deep colour like that, maybe even browns, just to bring out the redness of this beautiful wig. products here. The first is this John Renault contour cream. Let's just see what I can do with this. To get some sort of, get it away from my face a little. Let's do the other side and see how we go. I also have some of this fix and finish fixing spray for wigs. Well, I got that in my eye. That's good, isn't it? Good heavens. Oh! body, gives it more movement and it really makes it look like you have gone and styled your own hair and put a little bit of mousse, a little bit of hairspray in it and I really like that. I've got some of these clips here little clips that I got from Amazon. They're so useful. Now let's see what I can do with this without exposing too much of that permatease. And this is the bit where I will get some of my hair out. It blends relatively well. I did dye it yesterday and because I straightened it, I think it kind of blends pretty well. Now if I was to tuck that back, I don't think that's too bad really. Pretty good. Let's see what I can do on the other side. I wonder whether I could have a little bouffant. You know how I love those bouffants. They make you look like you were born with a really thick, lovely head of hair. And <laughs> I just love that. You know, even, even if I know it's not really real, it still gives me so much pleasure to pretend, to play around. I utterly, utterly love getting new styles on my on my head. Now, I believe that this has got to be brushed back somewhat. Because I'm not able to get everything going in the, in the same direction. 
let's try it and see what happens. With these things you can but try. The kitten's watching me. I think she thinks I'm a little bit crazy. You know, and um, I can't completely disagree. Let's pull some of this out here as well. What do you think? Can I pull it off? I think that in a style like this, with a wig like this, that is rooted but it's not um, mono filament at the top, I think really going to a lovely restaurant in the evening or a nice candlelit nook somewhere would be perfect really for this. Now, I wonder, if I was to pull out a bit more of all the stuff that I have straightened, I wonder if I could maybe What do you think? see how we go. I mean, <laughs> you know, I just think it's lovely. I think every wig, every style has got its own place its own type of look that it suits best. You know, I, I actually quite like making my own clothes and I, I've been dressmaking for myself primarily for many years. I find it a very exciting prospect to to think, okay, let's look at a, a style like this. Now, what would this really suit? Um, I've, I've got a lovely long, this, this piece is too long. I'm just gonna cut it because I, I kind of have this problem with lots of my wigs. That's my own hair I cut, by the way. <laughs> you know, it's getting to the stage where I'm thinking, should I just, just get rid of my own hair and then it'll be a hell of a lot less hassle but actually I don't think I will just yet because I do still sometimes when it's not locked down go to work and walk the dog and things like that and I'm kind of using uh, just wearing my own hair which actually is very fine and it used to be sort of long ringlets, beautiful rich brown colour and it's, uh, it has deteriorated into not a very manageable, frizzy, fine, sparse bit of a headache. So what do you think of Ashley in this colour? I'll do a review of Ashley in the other colour that I've got which I believe currently is um, honey rooted. I do love those rooted colours. I think they just look so much better if you don't have a monofilament. But as you know, I wear my Giselle and I, I wore it last night actually. I wear it up in a bouffant, updo at the back, my own sort of hair round and incorporated into it and you can see the monofilament here it just looks so real so if you don't have that this is a very close second a nice rooted color hope you like this 
and I'll see you soon.